News as men of fighting age seek to escape President Putin's partial mobilization. But how welcome are they once they cross the borders? In a public opinion, this is the key question. So what is the responsibility of ordinary Russians in this situation? And more and more people are not thinking that they should be held accountable. You are what you make your leaders. That point of view from Finland and we'll hear from Georgia. Also today, another tragedy in the Mediterranean as more than 80 people drown off the coast of Syria. And a remarkable story of two women who survived a similar perilous journey. I tell the, our refugee story. It tells the story about two girls that did not give up, that wanted to become someone. And we wanted to remind people that this is still happening today. First, the news. Hello, I'm Debbie Russ with the BBC News. There are reports that anti-government demonstrators seized large parts of a city in western Iran for a time. Footage appears to show the protesters took control of much of Oshnavye near Iraq. Protests have been taking place across Iran, sparked by the death of a woman who was arrested for allegedly breaking dress rules. Kazra Nasri reports. In the western city of Oshnavye, there are reports that the protesters have driven the security forces out of the city after days of violent clashes. Although one government news outlet said the city is still in the hands of the government forces. The nationwide unrest was sparked by the death of the 22-year-old woman, Mahsa Amini, in police custody. She had been detained for allegedly flouting strict hijab rules. President Ibrahim Raisi has promised a crackdown against those who he says oppose the security and tranquility of the country. Increased numbers of Russians are continuing to try to leave the country since President Putin announced the mobilization of at least 300,000 extra troops last Wednesday. The BBC's correspondent in Tbilisi says there's a queue about 10 kilometers long at the border between Georgia and Russia as men attempt to avoid the draft. She said movement was very slow and some people had been waiting more than 20 hours to cross. Border traffic between Finland and Russia has also increased. Satu Sikinen is the regional mayor of the Finnish province of South Karelia, which borders Russia. I would say the number of border crossers from Russia has doubled compared uh, to a week ago. And the reason for the growth might be that partial mobilization of troops in Russia. The European Union's foreign policy chief says Vladimir Putin's threat to use nuclear weapons needs to be taken seriously and not assumed to be a bluff. Josette Borrell has described the current situation in Ukraine as a dangerous moment. About 80 people have been killed during intercommunal clashes in the west of the Democratic Republic of Congo. The fighting in Mindombe province between the Teke and Yaka communities took place on Wednesday and Thursday. Will Ross reports. The clashes in the west of the Democratic Republic of Congo were fueled by a long-running land dispute. Traditional chiefs from the Teke community see themselves as the rightful owners of the land as they were in the Mayandombe province before the rival Yaka people settled there. This week a decision was taken to increase the tax to be paid to the Teke chiefs, a move that angered the Yaka community and led to fighting in three areas. The Congolese military intervened to end the violence, but the situation remains extremely tense. In recent months, dozens of people have died and more than 20,000 have been displaced in the same area. BBC News.